All right, so today we have uh, a fairly common household issue. Um, we typically see these clocks that some of the numbers are not showing up right. It might have the temperature, uh, humidity, those type of measurements. And this is pretty typical. Some of the numbers don't come through. Now the first thing to do, you usually won't solve it, but the first thing to do is install fresh batteries in, which I have done that. And as you can see that it's still not helpful. Uh, if you play around with it, when it's on, you'll notice that if you press in certain areas, sometimes on the screen, I'll do it lightly, it's made out of glass, but you'll notice sometimes that they'll come back, especially around the edges, and I found a sweet spot here or there. So you notice if I squeeze this just right, there it is, 1058. Um, perfect. But if I, uh, of course, release the pressure, something is not connecting right, and um, those numbers don't appear. And you can kind of, now if you had a really large clippers, you could probably not have to take anything apart, just put it here and find the right spot and be done with it. But then you're going to have clippers hanging out. So we're going to take this apart and see what's causing that, and if possible, if it's uh, worth fixing. So I've got my trusty jewelry screwdrivers with me, and we're going to set on taking this baby apart. Oof. All right, so that's one. Ooh, boy, these must have been either machine tightened or the Hulk. <laughs> I don't know why they're so tight. All right. Now, of course, this happens with cheap clocks, expensive clocks. You see this um, on watches too, tend to uh, cause issues where some of these numbers just for some reason start not to show. And we'll probably find out that it's something to do with a display contacts. The metal contacts are coming off, um, but these are not necessarily meant to be user replaceable. So let me make sure there's nothing hiding. Uh, there is a screw hiding underneath of there. Let's see if we can pop this up. Some of these companies like to put a couple extra. Uh, they went out of their way to put as many as possible. Uh, I guess that's good. And let me just check the battery compartment. Make sure they don't have any screws underneath there as well. No, they don't. Wonderful. So, do a quick shake. We got about five screws out. And hopefully the back will lift right up for the most part to reveal. I guess this is not all the way undone. Maybe. Let's see here. Now we've got this panel here, so I can't just pull it straight off. So it's probably still sticking to it somehow. Ah, there we go. All right, let's see what we have here. Ah, we may be in luck. We'll see. So we've got the battery compartment here. Let's see how I can turn this so this makes sense. This is where we have the buttons for temperature, humidity, setting the time. And most of that is, uh, in fact, all of the um, controllers going back to this uh, bottom circuit board. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. And then we have uh, this beeper here. This is what was making that beep, so you can set an alarm. Uh, standard AA batteries for a total of three volts. And uh, these are the hinges. So let's take a look what we have on this side because this is where the problem is at. So we've got um, a whole bunch of screws. Wow, that is, see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. That is a ton of screws. And that makes sense because I think on the other side is where those connections that we need to address are. So we've got a bunch of connections under here. And it's actually quite interesting. Uh, that's not me, was it? No, look at that. There's already kind of a scratch there. And if the camera can pick it up, look at these screws. <clears throat> if I turn this sideways, you're going to see something that I find quite interesting. Some of these are screwed in a lot tighter while these ones are looser. And this one's pretty high. So all this is almost beveled in. This looks like it was driven in with force, got a little scratch here from it, which makes me think it's uh, someone manually did this. It's not an automated system. But then we have it again. We have uh, this one is positively different. 
in terms of height, not all the way skewed, and then this one. So this inconsistency of pressure most likely uh, is causing some of this. So sure, at first it wasn't an issue, but the uh, contacts, maybe it's starting to, um, uh, starting to, oh no. The uh, environment starting to make those contacts uh, potentially rust or uh, degrade in terms of connectivity and that's typically what happens with these clocks. So uh, all things will break down over time. Um, so let's undo that. So we may get lucky, be able to clean those contacts off and save this precious <laughs> clock. All right. And if not, then we learn something new and fun. Let's grab the rest of these. So in case you're wondering, always be careful with these types of circuit boards because these black things that are really evident here, those are traces, i.e. they're pieces of flat wire that are connecting one thing to the other, just the same as these guys are. They're no different, only this time it's on the circuit board. If you accidentally scratch one of these and like cut straight through it, you've severed that wire. So just be a little careful. All right, so if we pull this one off, Let's see what this reveals. All right, maybe. All right. All right, we are gonna be in luck. I'm really actually quite excited because my guess is we can fix this. So the first thing we have is we have the actual sensor. I believe this is what's measuring the temperature. It's a little, little thermistor, so, um, Hopefully that's uh, coming through nice and clear. So we've got a nice thermistor there. And uh, we have a couple of diodes, capacitors, resistors supporting this. We've got the main brains of the clock, if you will, uh, here, along with the uh, crystal to set the hertz and a um, couple more resistors. So this uh, pad here that you're seeing right now this is the pad that's relaying the right com the right voltage to the display and as i mentioned these can experience corrosion from weathering from different environments if you're in the south probably quite familiar with things corroding and that's generally what happens these things um, start to cause issues see if we can get that to focus a little bit more i'll do that there we go. So um, potentially some of this can be. Now the other part that uh, can cause issue is of course how are these pads connecting to a, a display? Well it's got this guy right here and ever since I was a little kid I've always found these quite fascinating. It's simple at its heart but I bet the manufacturing process it can be a little bit tricky and what I'm referring to is this uh, beautiful um, well, let me see if I can pull this out, actually. Maybe that would be even better. Hey, there we go. We've got the display out. Wonderful. There's the display. Ta-da! Now, um, this display runs by electricity. So how do we connect uh, metal uh, pads, right, which are sending a voltage through these to the actual context? I mean, it is glass, right? Well, in between these panels, you can see very lightly there are leads, special uh, conductive leads to these numbers. And those leads, right, small, thin, thin, thin wires come all the way and touch one of these guys. See that? Same width as you're going to find on this back daughter board or main board, however you want to address it. So what's really neat is in between those two, we have this. This is a rubbery type of um, you know conductive device I'm not quite sure the name of it it's pretty neat though and it relays the contacts from the glass to the actual board so the board comes on and smashes it straight down on it and if there is sufficient pressure not uneven pressure those contacts I'm not sure if this is coming through but those contacts press on here just so 
and conduct electricity. So what can we do to improve this? That's the tricky part. I don't want to remove this from the glass because I'll probably cause issues with it. Uh, I can put it back, but it might be air pockets, it might introduce dust, and something's not contacting. Plus, as you can see, I may not get it perfectly aligned. So what I'm going to do, other than just to look at it from this video, I'm going to leave it alone because I suspect that if there's any um, gaps between the glass and this guy, there's nothing much I can do. I don't have that process to fix it or add a new one in. I'm sure it's possible, but I don't want to do that. So what I will do, though, is I'm going to gently put this back, gently clean this off, and then we're going to clean the contacts on the other side, apply a little power, and then maybe we can add the pressure based on the screw so it's even and get our clock back. All right, so I'm going to reassemble this display. Gently fit this in here go and now we have our display put together in this manner and then I'm gonna grab something I'm not sure what I can I'll grab some uh, alcohol and cotton and gently wipe this up and uh, then I will get um, some alcohol I don't have really anything abrasive but I'll get some alcohol to clean these up and then we'll apply some pressure and see if that does it for us so give me a moment to grab that and I've got my trusty cotton shirt. Make sure you don't use cotton swabs or uh, anything of that nature because the cotton particles are so loose, they'll just get lodged in here. They could grab on this and pull this rubber thing off. And if you do that, uh, you might just as well lose it. So I'm gonna add just a dab of alcohol on this. And I wrap my fingers like this. If you ever were in the military and you had to do shoe shining none of that then you will understand how that is hark back to the old days and I will just lightly rub the alcohol on here in order to remove any debris any issues at all or any yeah mainly should just be debris but if the metal is tarnishing somewhat there might be a little bit of residue on here so I'll move that press down a little bit but being very careful not to this and there you go. And there's a little bit of, uh, of, of dirt, most likely coming from what I would think is tin on those contacts. So this is done. Nothing else I can do about it. Now with this guy, I'm going to do the same thing. Very, very similar. I'm going to grab a new area. Smooth that out. And get some more isopropyl alcohol. Now I would suggest you don't use water because you need something that evaporates quite quickly. And we'll just rub vigorously on these contacts to clean them off. And if we've done it right, I would suspect that they'll, it might even look a little bit shinier. All right, be careful not to dislodge that crystal or break it. All right. All right. Wonderful. So I don't see very much residue on here, and, and you may not. It seems very, very clean. This certainly looks nice and clean. It didn't really look dirty before, but it's hard to tell. So we've got these contacts nice and clean. Uh, we didn't use any um, cotton that comes loose, so we are set to put this back together. Hopefully we can apply even pressure, and we're set. Now we're dealing with very low voltage here. So there's no real concern in powering this up so we can do a quick test run um, and uh, configure it. So this clock is working and it's providing juice out here for the display. So now we got to get the display uh, set up. All right, so being ever so gentle not to break these wires, which uh, is a lot easier to do. We'll set this here, and I'm going to marry this as it was. All right, and then there are other. If uh, the camera can pick it up, there are other guides. So this is not just sitting just within the center of this post. 
There's other guides, one right here that pokes through and one that's on this and that pokes through. See that? To assure that this is being aligned properly. It's not being skewed as we're aligning it. So if we take a look at this very gently, you can see sometimes you see something. I'm going to press on it a little bit. Oh, can't see anything. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to press on that a little bit. And you'll see some numbers. Oh, there you go, Sunday. And I'll try and press evenly on everything. And there we go. We see the bottom and we see the top coming. So let me get a couple of those installed and then we'll go through the configuration. Now I mentioned that these screws, the way that they were installed, uh, was impressively tight and uh, they seem to not necessarily be the same height. I'm not quite sure why that is. These are all the same. Ah, they are not. Okay. So we have two types of screws within this. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> interesting. So we do have two types of screws. So if you take a look real closely, we have one that is beveled. That's over here. And then we have this guy here who is not beveled. So um, see if I can figure out which one goes in which area. I'm not quite sure. Hmm, I did not pay attention. Uh, <laughs> I did not pay attention. Well. I could rewind the video and look at the type of screws. However, I won't. They all look about the same. You just don't tell anyone. Should be okay. Now I'll put this here. And um, I will put, start putting some on the other side so we don't uh, warp the board as we are installing these screws. And then I'm going to put one more. And then we'll take a look and see what we see on the actual image. Beautiful. So nice and tight. So let's see if we've repaired anything. Well, well, well. Now, there is no one here. When you power this up, it starts at 003. So let's uh, go to the back, press a couple of things. Uh, how about there's set? Okay, let's do 24 hours. Okay, that's set. Uh, this is 24, so we should do, you know, what should be the most illuminating, all right. I suppose we could do 68, would that be, yeah, look, it's going right through all those numbers. Fan, we can't do 68, <laughs> there's 8, we'll just leave it there. We'll leave it blinking. Okay, so it appears that it's actually solved. So we got to put more screws in because it may be a little bit finicky, right? Uh, temperature change comes about, and all of a sudden, little contacts don't work anymore, right? Enough space. So got to make sure we're putting all of these in. And I'm not going to over tighten these, but certainly uh, they need to be tight because that board needs to be snug against the glass and um, sandwiched in between that plastic, that rubber. Just dropped a screw. All right. So let's put this one here. And finally, again, make sure that's snug. We'll put the last one there keep that snug. So it is interesting why they have um, this design of the different screws. Seems kind of a bit unnecessary to have two different types of screws, but um, there we are. We have ourselves a nice, nice clock. Cool. So now we just need to put this back together. Now how did it go back together? <laughs> Don't think I need anything else for that. So we're going to Watch those wires and sandwich this in a little bit. All right. 
Just seeing what screws I fell out. I think only this one's that remaining. Can hear it making noise. All right. So let's put. I'm going to just do a quick spot check. So I'll put only about two screws in, turn around, <laughs> make sure it all of a sudden decided to uh, <laughs> stop working. And there we go. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, let me put the other ones in. We'll run through the test, and we're good to go. So we saved, well, I saved, but you may save one at home if you have one of these and you want to have a little fun. Saved ourselves, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. 15, 20 bucks. It's a pretty nice clock. All right. Let's get one more of these. All right. These vents on the side are so that the temperature can more easily reach that. Um, thermistor that we saw to measure the temperature. All right, so we didn't lose any screws, so we didn't make it any lighter, but it is solidly built. All right, so let's take a look and see what the temperature is reading because I'm not as familiar with Celsius. 74, if I take a look at my Galileo, it says 75, perfect. So we're really quite within spec. Uh, let's run through our numbers. All right. Okay. Certainly the sound sounds beautifully. Wonderful. And we'll check the other side. like me when I'm running. Okay, walking up the stairs. Ha ha. All right, so hit this. Fantastic. The month? Uh, I don't know. What is today? I think it's the 13th. And it is a Thursday. Look at that. Hit set again. What does that do us? All right, so let's hit set one more time. 24 is okay. What's the time? So it's military time now. And it's 8. So it's 20. Oh, 09. All right, so it's set, ready to go. And uh, this is awesome. And I think the last thing that I'm going to do is I don't really use this uh, alarm. So there's an alarm function on the back of this that I will shut down. All right, so um, tried the batteries. Um, suspected it wasn't, but want to make sure it's not something that simple. And it turned out it wasn't. I took it apart, cleaned the contacts, tried, did not remove that long rubber piece from the screen. Important not to do that, but gently cleaned it off with uh, rubbing alcohol uh, and cotton shirt make sure you do not use a cotton swab the um, cotton will separate and it gets lodged and in, uh, into the electronics and the rubber and it's hard to clean so you want to make sure you have something that's not going to so easily break apart like your un white undershirt and um, clean the contacts on the uh, main board again being careful not to ruin any circuits um, and then put it back together make sure we have good pressure on the board and we have ourselves a nice clock Thanks for watching.